Hello again, everybody. Today we're going to do a little online uh, lecture related to semantic maps for instruction. So exactly what is a semantic map? Now, there's different software, for instance, Inspiration, but you can also use, uh, we're going to use bubble.us for this in-class activity, but you know, also Google Docs that provides you with opportunities. Uh, even just simple worksheets that you'll find with graphic organizers, I'll be providing you with a number of those as well as examples, as templates. That all qualifies into uh, what semantic mapping, all right? So this, this helps students to really visualize concepts, ideas, and relationships, especially ones that are complicated. We're going to look at some examples here in the slides presentation, but this really is helpful, for instance, structure of government, solving of equations, life cycle of plants, for instance. Those are all skeletal system. Those are all examples of items that can be used by mapping to help foster student understanding. It really helps to visualize the information. Another benefit is the improve, improvement of the writing process and writing proficiency. So many students really struggle with looking at a blank piece of paper, getting started. Well, the semantic maps can provide an outline or a template for them, really help them funnel their ideas from an introduction to the main body, to putting in facts and information and then writing up a conclusion. It helps them visually organize their writing instead of just looking at that blank page. And then again, same thing, kind of similar when we look at planning and organizing different projects. In instruction, this can be helpful for diagramming. This can be teacher generated. This can be student generated. I already touched on the concept maps. An excellent idea for providing templates and worksheets. If you want students to be working on the same project or the same uh, concept or material at once, you can go ahead and provide them with these templates. Another idea, once you get more comfortable with your students, is you, especially if you're teaching upper middle school and high school, one thing that's really nice about semantic mapping is students will tend to, on their own, if you give them time and the freedom to do so, they'll come up with their own different designs and templates for how they want to organize their information. It's really quite interesting and fascinating to watch how different students' minds work when it comes to creating their own semantic mapping and, and graphic organizers. It's really pretty cool. And depending on what you're going for, what your goal is, you can also connect these, if you're using a digital version, right to hyperlinks and send the students directly to information. Now, in social studies, we're going to start with this. You can use this for all different grade levels, all right? This helps, for instance, maybe if you're making even a timeline, that's an example of a semantic map, a concept map. Structure of government, hierarchy of government, that's another example. Causes and effects of a war or a revolution, for instance. Chronological order of events, such or historical persons, historical ideas, maybe you're speaking about economics and you want to track capitalism, socialism, communism, etc. All that plays in here. Now, another thing that's nice is this allows for students to go back and pull information from their previous experiences and tie them into current events. So here's an example of a concept mapping in social studies. Right here we can see uh, the three branches of the US government and how they are broken down. So this provides a nice visual for students to grasp this concept as opposed to just writing it out in a notebook, what they are. Here's a visualization to help them process that information. Another example, causes of the French Revolution. As you can see, it's broken down into main concepts, Age of Enlightenment, financial difficulties, looking at different rulers, King Louis is on here. So you can see, again, this helps students really visualize and spread out the information, but also you'll notice it breaks it into small, bite-sized chunks, right? So they're not reading giant blocks of text. They've been able to summarize it, take that information, summarize, synthesize, and put it into small bullet points, essentially, on their concept map. In mathematics, these are fantastic. They can explain addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, and often these can make math problems much easier to comprehend. Visual concepts. Here's an example with linear equations. As you can see, I'm not a math guy. I'm a social studies guy, but certainly I know for me using math, semantic mapping has really actually helped me quite a bit. In language arts, you can generate information, organize information in the writing process. So this is a great place to start, for instance, if you're brainstorming, if you're trying to generate ideas. 
It's really nice for students, as I mentioned earlier, to be able to align their introduction with their body, their conclusion, where they're going to put their supporting facts. Uh, a character mapping, for instance, in a pre-reading or a post-reading activity is also really, really good when you look at reading comprehension. Some examples here would be a character semantic map when we look at Huck Finn, different, uh, different items related to the specific characters and how they tie into the main character of the book, Huck, right? So great idea for those of you in language arts to enable students to kind of break down individual people or characters in books and their relationship with others. Again, just an example of something that you could use from a primary character and how this person identifies, things of that nature. And last one I wanted to show you here for language arts. This is kind of an outline that I'd mentioned earlier. As you, as you can see here, we have the introduction. Now here's the key points, right? So here's three, three items you want to identify under, under introduction. Strong hook, define audience, thesis statement. Then you have your three body paragraphs. Reason one, two, and three, you see supporting fact, conclusion. So what students can do is they can go in, and before they're going to write that page, two-page, three-page paper, whatever the requirements are for your essay outline, that's going to depend on your grade level and all those things, this provides them with a roadmap. So they're breaking down their information, they're breaking down their facts or their examples or their reasons into small bite-sized information first, which they later can go back and expand upon. In science, these are fantastic to help reveal patterns and relationships. It's wonderful, especially for science. Science used to always be kind of problem-based, and now this is moving on or moving out more into this this graphic organizer, semantic mapping, visualization aspect. It takes complex information, you drop them into small parts, you, ch you cut them up, you chop them up. This makes it much easier for students to understand and learn these concepts. They don't feel so overwhelmed because you have it broken into smaller concepts. In science, here we go. We can look at this, the metric system, volume, mass, and length, how that's broken down. And another one, another example here in science of the skeletal system. So for instance, you're teaching anatomy, maybe biology class. Here's something that you could give to your students. And then up to you, it depends on how much you want. So for instance, when you create these maps, you can give them all. You can give them nothing on it. You can let them go. But primarily, I'd recommend you give them something to work with. So for instance, uh, a good idea would be go ahead in here and you, you, you give them skeletal system and then your three main categories and then let them go and fill in the blanks for the rest. So today we're going to, I'll talk more about this in class when we perform this task. I'm going to have you log in and create account on bubble.us, which I will be putting up a tutorial how to do that here uh, as well. So you'll be able to do that. Now I'm going to ask you to create a concept based upon your specific grade level and or subject area. That will be your task and assignment today. Thank you. I hope this video helped you under, better understand what are semantic mapping tools and how to use them in your classroom.